when I first saw the movie Dead Men Walking about 12 years ago, it completely affected me. It was one of those pieces that just raised so many issues and really provoked a lot of thought. Well, the 1995 movie Dead Man Walking earned Susan Sarandon an Oscar for her portrayal of Sister Helen, a Catholic nun who was the spiritual advisor to convicted murderer Patrick Sonnier, played by Sean Penn, who was sentenced to death. It was based on a true story and was an incredibly moving film. And now comes, wait for it, Dead Man Walking, the opera. I was very, very anti the death penalty and when I knew that there was an opera available, the industry that I was currently working in, I was really excited to potentially be able to bring this piece to the people of Australia. Terence McNally, one of America's top playwrights, has written the libretto and Jake Heggie wrote the music. It combines pop, Negro spiritual, jazz, obviously classical music and opera to tell the story. I wrote to one of our top radio broadcasters, Alan Jones, who attracts uh, over two million listeners every morning. And I said to Alan, I want to put this opera on. I know it may sound crazy, but I think there's enough people that are interested in this particular work to get behind this. Will you help me? Will you come and open the fundraising appeal? Needless to say, such a substantial creative undertaking requires sponsorship support. And I believe this opera has a stand alone appeal. And I leave you with this. This is going to happen. I will not stop until this happens. It was a, an extremely tough process. It was three years trying to raise money. We literally wrote to thousands of companies and different people and tried to persuade them to get on board. I think the hardest thing for me personally to come to terms with was the fact that at one point no one believed that the production was going to happen and so not only did I have to keep fighting for more funding, I had to keep fighting for people to believe that this was going to happen and a day later um, promoter picked it up, Andrew McManus. To be honest, you know, I really wondered whether it would be possible for her to get this up. It's, it was a huge project without support. And I keep waiting for the phone call to say, no, I'm afraid it's been kind of canned. And once we started rehearsal, I thought, well, maybe it'll be pulled, you know, halfway through. Um, and Nicole really stayed solid, and I thought she put a great team together. I've been technical director of the State Theatre for six years. And uh, Nigel Jameson, knowing that my background was at the State Theatre, um, knew that it was kind of a good idea to try and take me on board because I knew by millimetre um, what we could and could not build in the place. I wanted this work to just like totally demolish the boundaries of any other opera. I wanted this to be cutting edge and just something that people would talk about for a long, long time. And I knew that Nigel was the person to do that. The first time I came across Dead Man was of course through the famous film and it's a wonderful film. And that kind of quite interested me, you know, the, the cinematic experience everyone has had of that story and could we make could we start the theater as if it was the show as if it was um, cinema and then sort of manage to combine many of the aspects of film with live performance and that's been a little bit of a, a preoccupation of mine over the last few years right from the beginning of the process um, Nicole wanted the the whole production to be this sort of multimedia um, kind of uh, extravaganza I guess of, of drawing on all of these different um, kind of possibilities and reach into areas that opera traditionally wouldn't Especially and one of those the beginning scene and yeah. most powerful and dramatic moments of the entire show there had to be a filmed sequence of the murders mm. or the beginnings of the murders um, and we had to go out on loca location for a proper shoot when I saw the actual model of the stage of, of Dead Man walking a four-level uh, prison cell block uh, with this massive ramp down the middle over the audience I was I was quite baffled but really excited. I didn't think it would fit because the actual stage of the State Theatre is built, um, it's what they call a dynamic build, it's, it's for an old cinema system where um, it's actually a picture house and the stage goes on an angle, usually you can't fit any set in there. So the set for Dead Man was actually built to fit within this stage itself, hence the reason it comes out on big angles, which I thought was the craziest thing I've ever seen, but it, it actually really, really worked, luckily. Dan Potter and Nigel came up with an ingenious way of putting the orchestra, which should have been in an orchestra pit, on four different levels. We really wanted a sense of depth and discovered this dressing room halfway up the back wall, so then in a sense the whole set was designed 
for the space and then often I think that leads to a much more exciting result. And something that our audiences certainly in Australia hadn't yet seen. One of the most um, difficult and uh, most challenging points of the, of the, the production was fitting a 55-piece orchestra in a steel scaffolding structure. Sound's not really supposed to go into big metal cages and the, especially very quiet sensitive sounds such as violins and, and piccolos and um, they and harps and whatever was in the orchestra. It was, it was um, we had to create a sound that was very intimate within the structure itself and then also intimate enough and not too amplified for the audience. Design is just predominantly 99% problem solving and that's what it just ended up being, just the, the domino effect of putting the orchestra up there and then what the problems arose and one of them was lighting uh, and, and one of them was the fact that the a conductor of the orchestra wouldn't be seen by most of those levels considering they're on three stories so we had to have live sort of feed monitors for, for the orchestra. The people that came on board, especially Nicole's father who, who it, blew, it blew me away to see how anyone could a, have the knowledge to build such a structure, and B, the amount of time and energy that he would give to, to the project. For our costume budget, we had only $6,000 to dress 20, 30 uh, opera singers. Yeah, and through having the orchestra on set, which is very rarely done, if ever, um, it, it obviously therefore required the need to have um, them all in costume, which is... As prisoners. As prisoners. Much to in their dismay. Set. It ended up being a really beautiful hall to make a show in, and we were able to rehearse there, which was another big advantage. Everything's being done first rate, with, from the casting to the production values, the conductor, the orchestra, everything is being considered. We were so lucky in we had more media covering this opera production than any other opera production as far as I'm aware of in this country. Teddy Tahu Road cemented his international opera reputation in Dead Man Walking when he played the prisoner condemned to death in the United States. Now he's reprising the role that has made him surer than ever that death sentences are wrong. We face it now with you know, people on death row in different countries that are Australian. The death penalty writ large is Guantanamo, Iraq, and David Hicks, now an Australian caught in the net. It's mainly about the virtue of compassion in life and how that stacks up against the power of vengeance or the, the, the power of fear. And when I first heard it, when they called me and said, hey, Helen, they're thinking of doing an opera, I was delighted because I thought, music takes us to places of our heart we don't even know we have. The unusual nature of the production has drawn some unusual names into the cast. Australian Idol runner-up Anthony Kalia will play the killer's brother. It's just something I, I really want to be part of because it's such an empowering and powerful uh, piece of theatre. The show opens at Sydney State Theatre on September 27th. brilliant and I certainly haven't seen anything as good as that and I'm not biased but opera wise since Dead Man and hadn't before seen as amazing a production. Artistically it's just an incredible achievement and we had the best of the best in our country working on this production we were very very lucky. And people were really moved by the story so that was I was always happy to create a work you know that, that an audience enjoyed. It's an incredible story and it certainly got us immediately yeah. like I know a lot of people Hooked us from the beginning. Um, did especially with Teddy's performance. I remember waiting for the announcement for the Helpman Awards and I was so nervous there were 
so many people that just wanted this production to be a success and so much goodwill had gone into the production and we came out with six nominations over all the major musicals like Billy Elliot and Phantom. I knew that even if we didn't win an award that that was just a huge achievement. And Helpman goes to... Teddy Tahu Roads, Dead Man Walking. On behalf of Teddy Tahu Roads, I'd like to accept this award. I know he would be so proud of this. Thank you so much, Andrew McManus, for taking a risk on these productions. And let's have more independent promoters and producers do this because we really need our industry to keep growing. Thank you so much. The people that I ended up working with were pretty amazing. I think that all comes back to Nicole and her, her love for this project. Her actual love for the actual story itself was quite amazing. I think herself and Nigel had this amazing bond about the sister Helen. One of the real joys of the project was to get to meet Sister Helen. Um, yeah, she's a really inspiring woman and um, just to, to spend a couple of days in terms of being around somebody with that kind of energy and that appetite for life and that humour and um, that enormous sense of um, determination to fight for social justice was really inspiring. Throughout the whole process there was this as silly as it may sound, this greater force at hand and I think what Sister Helen was fighting for in terms of campaigning against the death penalty was always with me and her spirit and she would always write to me and say keep going Nicole, keep believing in what you're doing. I never doubted that it would happen.